This is a full-size mechanical gaming keyboard right here that features Razer's purple switches, the opto mechanical switches. In layman's terms, the light obstruction triggers the light sensor, registering every keys that you press on the keyboard while simultaneously giving you a nice mechanical tactile and clicky feedback. The best of both worlds, some may say. The goal right here is not only to have the lightest but also the fastest actuating keys. Great for competitive gaming to reduce that milliseconds of delay between human interaction to the keyboard, the keyboard to the PC, to the network. So if you want to get some kills faster than usual, you might want to get this keyboard. But before we jump into performance, let's talk about the purple switches right here. It has an actuation force of 45 grams with a travel of 1.5 millimeter. You may say that this is nearly identical or identical to the Cherry MX speed switches. Yes, but that is mechanical based. This is light based. And a lot of gaming brands right now are going with light based sensors because they are proven to be a little bit faster that can determine life or death milliseconds in the game. So all the keys right here is hold on by cross stem with wireframe. So there is a little bit of rattling sound like a snake. So give Razer some time. I will not fault them on this first generation of purple switches. Give them some time so the next generation of purple switches will have less audible level like this. Now again, I will talk about the travel. The travel is so nice for my hand. I literally can cover the important keys on a keyboard right here with just one hand. I am personally a StarCraft rank player. I love to play StarCraft micromanaging. I don't like macro. Macro is for the weak. The only way you want to beat the Koreans is to micromanage, but oftentimes they beat me in the end. But it's more important to my, for me because micromanaging most of my hotkeys is at the bottom area right here. Having the ability to have the key spread equally or at a quite a distance, a correct distance, helps me to not trigger the wrong keys at the wrong time. So good job on Razer on that. Now talking about the build quality right here, you may notice one thing that the keyboards right here is a slim profile, which I like. The bottom is entirely of plastic, build very tough. And more importantly, the top plate right here is a matte black finish aluminum top right here. So if I try to kill the keyboard using my head like everyone loves to see, I try to bend it, it hurts like hell. I cannot kill the keyboard. I try to bend it with my leg. Nah, -uh. it would not bend. It would not pop out the keys. It's built solid. So good job on that. Now, if you've seen most of my keyboard review, you know that I like one style keyboard, which is the floating style keyboard right here where the keycaps are located on the top plate. The reason is quite simple, the ease of maintenance. You can use an alcohol swab or a Kleenex to remove all the dirt and gunk away from the keyboard, keeping it clean compared to a flush style keyboard. Now, many may argue that the downside of this kind of setup is the ambient glow will be much lesser compared to flush style keyboard with silver or white plane to boost the lighting. I agree with them. Com the lighting, especially on top of this keyboard with a black matte finish, the glow would not be bright, let's be honest. But I don't mind it. I don't want my keyboard to be bright. I want it to be present, but at the same time, not too present, too strong of a present. I still think low ambient glow keyboards is nice aesthetically, especially for low ambient setup. You don't want it to be brighter than your PC. Your PC is supposed to be brighter than your keyboard. So yeah. Um, the glow is nice. You can still see the agenda. It feels nice and natural. It does not feel like it's unwanted there. It's just one piece with my low ambient setup, especially the one behind me right now. It weighs 880 grams, including the cable, quite light for a full-size mechanical gaming keyboard. The two meter long braided cable is a bit stiff for cable management. The two stage stand helps to increase the height by 0.7 cm and 1.3 cm high. There is 10 rubber pads on the bottom, six large ones on the main keyboard and four on each of the stands. You can adjust the brightness of the keyboard using the FN plus the F11 or 12 keys, but you do need the Razer Synapse software to tweak the lighting effects, performance and settings of the keyboard. The lighting effects include breathing, fire, reactive, ripple, Spectrum Cycling
Starlight Static Wave In custom, you can choose which keys to light up or effects to run at any keys of your choice. Maybe column, section, whatever you choose. For me, I can go crazy like setting fire on the number pad, whereas the center part, I may put reactive. Maybe the first row, I can put starlight. The second row, I can put wave, spectrum cycling, yada yada. Just go crazy with the keyboard so you can show off to your friend and say, yo, I have the best crazy ass mechanical gaming keyboard. Can your mechanical keyboard do the same? So here is my experience starting with productivity. Now my usual setup for productivity for typing notes, emails, proposals and so on is using a Cherry MX Blue keyboard. Now compared to that, I use this almost a week plus as my daily driver. I can say that the keys are much easier to actuate. Just that I noticed that the keys right here on the keyboard compared to my Cherry MX Blue is much louder audibly. Yeah. So that's something you may face if you're using this as a typing keyboard. It's loud, it's present. A lot of people like it loud and strong. I don't mind it because it's actually nice to type on it. Now, as far as gaming, if you're a mobile gamer like League of Legends, uh, Arena, or whatever, Horn thingy, as well as Dota, you are using these top keys, it feels fine. If you're a Overwatch player, you'll use some of the keys right here, it's fine. I like this keyboard more because of its aesthetic looks, its minimalistic, slim design. It works well for typing, it works well for gaming. Should I recommend it if you have the necessary funds? Yes, but uh, yeah, it's up to you. You have to test it out and see whether it works for you. For me, it's a good direction. I would like to see Razer reducing the audible level and I think this could sell like hot cakes if they reduce the price a little bit maybe by 20 USD. So thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in other Razer product reviews as well as where to get this keyboard, links in the video description below. Remember to like and subscribe and comment below what other Razer products we should review next. Remember to comment where you're from. I would like to know where my viewers from and more importantly, see you guys in the next Razer review which is the Razer Naga Mouse.